chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, we're going to start in verse 1. And the message this morning is the work of the gospel. Yeah. The work of the gospel. <clears throat> what it is that the gospel does in our lives. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> and if you will, stand with me as we read in reverence to God's yeah. word. Starting in verse 1. Colossians chapter 1, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossus, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. Yeah. As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Yeah. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with might, with all might, according to His glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Yeah. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness. I want you to understand this is all the working of the gospel. Yeah. Amen? Amen. In our lives. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Yeah. Even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by Him and for Him. Yeah. And He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. Yes. And He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, yeah. that in all things He might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of His cross, yeah. by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself. By Him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Yeah. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you this morning for the working of the gospel in our lives today. For Lord, if it wasn't for the gospel, none of us would be here today. Amen. Yeah. Lord, none of us would have the hope that is steadfast and sure in our lives. Lord, none of us would have uh, been reconciled to God. And Lord, also that 
we would not consist in Jesus Christ had it not been for the Gospel. Yeah. For Lord, it is the Gospel which consummated the whole promises of Your Word. Lord, that brought about the empowering of Your truths into our lives. Lord, because it is of His death, burial, and resurrection that He said, it is finished. Yeah. Lord, we thank You that we, through the Gospel, can live for You. And Lord, through the Gospel, can bear much fruit. And Lord, through the Gospel, be ministers unto others. And we give thanks to You through God our Father and through Jesus Christ our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> He starts off in verse 1 and he says, I am uh, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And I want you to understand it is by the will of God that we are today born again through Jesus Christ. Wow. It is by the will of God that we have been separated from the world and brought into the body of Jesus Christ through the gospel. Yeah. It is by the will of God, amen, that Jesus came and died on the cross. It is by the will of God that He spent three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And it is by the will of God that He rose again the third day. Yeah. Amen? Amen. So the will of God is at work in each one of us through the gospel. Amen? Yeah. It's because of the gospel that we have the hope in the Word, in the Scriptures today, that I know, that I know, that I know, I am going to heaven. Amen. Amen. It is that same Gospel that has given me such hope and more than uh, of the promises of God that I know uh, that uh, God has a plan for me in my life. I mean, what other plan, what other... Uh, proof do we need that God uh, has a plan for us than for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And it is this gospel that, the, that God from the time the world began had in place. Amen. I, want to, I don't have the scripture written down, but we read it this morning in our Sunday school class, and it goes so much with what we're talking about uh, today. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting in verse 1, he says, My brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified, right. which is the gospel. Yes. Amen. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. And what is the power of God? <coughs> Romans chapter 1 tells us, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation yes. Yes. to all them that believe. So our faith would not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the wisdom of God through the gospel. Amen? Verse 6 says, Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. And who are perfect? but they that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the, of the princes of this world, that come to not. And all the wisdom of this world, if it is not of God, if it is not from God's Word, it will come to not. Amen. Amen. It will come to not. But verse 7 says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which it's the mystery of the gospel, amen, which God, what? Ordained before the world unto our glory. Yeah. Before God even created 
He already had ordained the gospel for us Amen. that His Son would come and be born into this world and would live a sinless life and would give His life on the cross of Calvary to die for our sins. Amen. That's why He is called the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Amen. Because God ordained the gospel, which is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. Yeah. For it pleases God that through the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. And it is the preaching of the gospel that God, that, is, that pleases God. Amen. Because that is the power of God unto salvation. So again, I want us to understand that it is by the will of God. That the gospel is what separates us unto Jesus Christ. Amen? Yeah. Unto eternal life. Yeah. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yeah. That's why he said, I did not come to you with the wisdom of man. Or the wisdom of princes. Or the wisdom of this world that come to naught. Why? Because all those things... Don't amount to anything when you die. Amen? When you die, the only thing that's going to matter is did you believe the gospel? That's right. Did you trust in Jesus Christ as your only Savior? Because the world says there's many ways to heaven. That's the wisdom of the world, right? Mm -hmm. The wisdom of the world is to say, well... We're, we're all going our different ways, but we're, we're all trying to get to the same place. Well, you can try and try and try and try, but you're going to fail if you do not go through Jesus Christ. That's right. Because if there was any other way, and I've said this, uh, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. If there was another way to heaven, then Jesus Christ would not have had to die. Amen. But that is so key for us to understand and to make others understand. Because people say that there are so many different ways. Well, you need to be baptized. Well, if baptism saved, then Jesus wouldn't have had to die. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Or you have to take of the Lord's Supper. Well, if the Lord's Supper saved you, then Jesus would not have had to die. Amen. There are so many things that people put in the place of Jesus Christ for salvation. Well, just keep the commandments, the Ten Commandments. If you keep the Ten Commandments, then you're good enough to get into heaven. Then Jesus would have had to die. Do you understand that it is by the will of God that the gospel was chosen? Yeah. That Jesus would die again, be buried, and, ru and rise again. For our justification. You see God chose that. There is no other way. There is no other way. Jesus said I am the way. The truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father. But by me. You see. You say why is this so important Brother Scott. Because this is the very foundation of everything. Yes. Is the gospel. It is the very foundation. Nothing else in scriptures matter if the gospel is not there. Right. Amen? Yeah. Because nothing else in the word of God can change a heart and a life except for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. And once the person believes in Jesus as their Savior and is changed from the inside, not from the outside. That's what religion does. Religion puts lipstick on a pig. Salvation changes the pig. Amen? And that's what happens is people try to put lipstick and try to put a new patch on an old piece of clothing. When that don't, ha that don't work. Amen? And Jesus told the Pharisee, He said, you're those that, that make white the sepulcher. In other words, you paint the outside of the tomb. And you make it really nice and, and pretty. And you garnish it with all sorts of flowers, but on the inside is dead men's bones. That's what religion does. Mm -hmm. Is it tries to change the outward appearance of a person to seem righteous, 
but it does nothing to change the heart. Amen. But the gospel changes the heart. Amen. You see, because when you believe that Jesus died for your sin, and when you believe that He was buried to take your sins away, and that He was risen to bring you justification and redemption, then you see that changes your heart. Amen. And then God puts His Spirit within you. Why? Because God chose that for salvation. Yes. It is the will of God that we are saved through the gospel. Amen. Amen. And I know I spent a lot of time on that, but it is so important because the Bible says that the spirit of Antichrist is those who say that Jesus Christ is not come in the flesh. That's the spirit of Antichrist that is in the world today. Is that Jesus Christ does not matter. You don't have to have Jesus Christ to be saved. Uh, there's, been, there's been preachers who have stood in the pulpit and said that there are people in Africa who've never heard the name of Jesus Christ who will be in heaven one day. And that is so against the gospel. Amen. It is untrue and it is false. And people like to bring that question up. Well, what about the little tribes in Africa that's never heard of Jesus Christ? Well, how do you know they've never heard of Jesus Christ? Is it because someone says that they haven't? It's funny that they found a tribe in Papua New Guinea that's been hidden for hundreds of years, and yet when they found them, that they had a worship where they had a cross, and they worshiped the cross. A tribe in Papua New Guinea who people say have never heard of Jesus Christ. The Bible says here, in Colossians chapter 1, if you will read with me, in verse 23, it says, If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was, was, past tense, and which was preached to every creature Amen. which is under heaven. You yes. see, in Paul's time, the gospel was preached in the whole world. Yes. Amen? You say, well, what about the Native Indians that lived in, in America? No, the gospel was preached in the whole Amen. world. Amen? We don't know when the Indians made their way over here. And we don't know how many people have been over here. People say Columbus was the first man, but they find ruins from uh, uh, Vikings that outdate Columbus. Mm -hmm. And they have found many others that have been here way before Columbus. So don't let the wisdom of man confuse you to think that God's Word is not true. Because I'm going to tell you what. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Yeah. No, every man, woman, and child that stands before God will be without excuse. Yes. Because God's Word has been sounded through the whole world. Through the whole world. Yeah. <coughs> And it's funny to me that people say, well, what about the Muslim children that are not taught about Jesus Christ? Well, it's funny to me that they are taught about Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ is found more in the Quran than Muhammad is found in the Quran. And that a man who was studying the name of Jesus Christ in the Quran found that Jesus Christ in the Quran means the Word of God. Amen. And he began to question his belief. And he went to a, a professor in a college over there, a Muslim professor, and he asked the professor, he said, is the Word of God creation? 
Or did the Word of God create? And the professor said, the Word of God created. Which is what we believe. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. What did he, what did he, how did He do it? He said, let there be light. He spoke, and it was. So the Word of God created. It is not creation. And this is what this Muslim professor said to this man. It created. Then he said, Jesus Christ is God. Yes. Because Jesus Christ, or Jesus in the Quran, means Word of God. And he became a Christian because of Jesus in the Quran. Yeah. You see, Jesus, God hath given him a name that is above every name. Yes. Amen. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. Because Jesus is above all. Amen. Yeah. And so it is not out of their reach, but if they would seek, amen, the Bible says, Seek, and ye shall find. Amen. Knock, and it shall be open. Ask, and ye shall receive. The reason people don't come to Jesus Christ is not because He's not available to them. It's because they don't seek Him. Yeah. Amen. It's because they don't want Him. The Bible says that a man is not condemned by, uh, or he that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Amen. You see, people like to point the finger at people and say, oh, that person's going to hell. Look at what they did. Or you just told a lie, you're going to hell. Isn't that what people like to say? Well, if that was the truth, we'd all be going to hell yes. because for all have sinned Amen. and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Amen. You say, well, then what sends a person to hell? Because they don't believe Amen. the gospel. That's right. And they have not received Jesus Christ into their heart. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. What does that mean? Is that like getting your cell phone out and calling the Lord? No. That call there means as if someone was dying. In other words, that they were drowning in a, in a lake or in the sea and they saw someone who could save them and they called out, Save me! Help! That's the kind of call Man. that it is talking about there. That you see that without Jesus Christ, you are going to die and go to hell. Man. And you call on Jesus to save you. Man. Thou shalt be saved. Man. Amen? Because Jesus said, All that come to me, I will in no wise cast out. Yes. In fact, He gave the invitation to Himself. He said, Come unto me, all <coughs> ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Man. Amen? Because our rest truly is in Jesus Christ. And it is the gospel. And I'm not even getting into the message that I had today. But God has His way. Amen. Yes, He Amen. does. God knows what He wants us to hear this morning. Amen. And that is that God chose the gospel. Yep. It is the gospel. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you invite people to come to church, good for you. Amen. But don't think that that gets you out of telling them the gospel. Amen. Because it's not inviting a person to church that's going to get them saved. It is in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now praise the Lord if they come to church and they hear the gospel. And they get saved. You know what? Jesus didn't tell His disciples to go out and invite people to church. Mm -hmm. He said to go out into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. That's what he said. Amen. That's what he said. And that's what we ought to do is Amen. to go out and preach the gospel. To tell people about Jesus Christ. Amen. Now they can call us Bible thumpers and Jesus freaks and tell us we're crazy and tell us we need to shut up. But I'm going to say as Peter and John said, we can't help but speak of the thing which we have seen Amen. and heard. Yes. Amen. And when they tell us that we're not able to speak in Jesus' name, then we can tell them, you know what? If whatever you think is right, you're going to judge. But as for us, we must obey the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yeah. 
And what God has said we must do. Why? Because we believe the gospel. Yes. Amen. That's where it all comes down to. Amen. If you don't believe the gospel, then it's not going to change your life. Mm -hmm. And if you don't believe the gospel, then you're not going to have an importance in your life. To, to see others come to Jesus Christ. If you don't believe the gospel, then you're not going to have the power of God in your life to live for Him. Amen. It's not going to happen. Amen? You can try to be good. You can try to keep the commandments. But you know what? You're still going to be empty yep. inside. Amen. And with, if you don't believe the gospel, then you will have no purpose in your life. Amen. And it's not just about believing it once. It's about continuing in it. Yes. Amen? Yeah. It's about continuing in your faith. As he says here, if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, you must continue your belief in the gospel. Yes. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. You must keep that core belief within you at all times. Yeah. Because that is the well that is springing up within you. Yes. Amen? Amen. That is that well of, uh, of, of David that we can come to and draw out the waters of salvation continually. Amen. Because it is our belief in the gospel that drives us to live for Jesus Christ. Amen. Because if Jesus gave His life for an unworthy sinner like me, then I must give my life for Him. Amen. Which is what Romans chapter 12 tells us to do. And that is to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Amen. And how do we renew our mind? Word. In the gospel, amen? In the word. And what does the gospel mean? The gospel means the good news, the good message, amen? You say, well, the gospel is in what? John through, I mean, uh, Matthew through John? No, the gospel's from Genesis to Revelation, amen? amen? Yeah. It's all about Jesus. Yes. It is. Amen. Everything in there. That's what the Old Testament believers, that's how they were saved. They, did, they weren't saved another way. People think, well, they were saved back then by sacrifice. No, it was not by sacrifice that they were saved. Mm -hmm. Did they sacrifice? Yes. But you see, the sacrifice was a picture of Jesus, which was going to come and be the sacrifice for their sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, it was to roll their sins over. Waiting for the Messiah to come and pay for that sin yeah. once and for all. Yeah. Because the blood of bulls and goats would not pay for the sins. Mm -hmm. Would not do it. But the blood of Jesus Christ would. Yeah. And we sang this morning, there is power in the blood. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Because it is by the blood of Jesus Christ that He paid for the sins of the whole world. Amen. The reason we don't sacrifice today is because we look back to the sacrifice that was made. Where the people in the Old Testament were looking forward to the sacrifice that would be made, which was Jesus Christ. So they were not saved a different way. It has always been, for by grace are you saved by faith. Yeah. Yeah. You see, there was many people in the Old Testament that did the sacrifices, but the Bible says they weren't saved. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they were just going through the motions. Yeah. There was no true belief in their heart. Mm -hmm. See, the Bible says, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, yeah. with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But because they did not truly believe in their hearts, they were just going through the motions as a religion. Yeah. It was just a tradition. And it became something that they worshipped. They started worshipping the sacrifice instead of worshipping the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Lord. You say, well, they didn't know. David said, the Lord 
said unto my Lord, Amen. Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Yeah. Who was he talking about? He was talking about Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Before Jesus was even here, the prophets, <laughs> they all spoke of Jesus. Yeah. In fact, when Jesus come, he fulfilled every scripture written about the Messiah. Yes. Yeah. I've said a lot to say this, that it is all about the gospel. Yeah. Because it is all about Jesus Christ. And He is the gospel. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Because it was His life that hung on the cross. Yeah. And it was His blood that was spilled for our sin. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And it was Him that went into the heart of the earth and then rose again. And it is Jesus that is coming back again. Yeah. Amen. And He's coming back soon. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No one knows the day or the hour, but we see the seasons. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Yeah. The Bible said that the beginning of sorrows was what? Earthquakes in diverse places. Are we having earthquakes in diverse places yes. today? He said the beginning of sorrows was distress of nations. Are we having distress of nations today? Man, if you watch the news, <laughs> you can see yeah. that it's not just America. It's every nation that's having distress. The Bible said that it was going to be the sea and the waves roaring. Are the sea and the waves roaring today? Yes. And what's happening? is it's getting worse and worse. Why? Because we're getting closer and closer to the coming of Jesus Christ. Right. We need to continue in the faith. Grounded and settled. Right. Amen. And be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Yeah. Because it's when we do that we lose our compass. You understand that? <coughs> the gospel is our compass that points us in the path that we are to walk. Yeah. And I'm speaking spiritually. Okay? Yeah. It is the gospel that keeps us pointed more <coughs> to our Heavenly Father. Because Jesus said that He is the author and finisher of our faith. And consider <coughs> Him. Amen? Consider Him. That means weigh Him out. Think about it. Ponder it. Chew the fat. Amen? Amen. Chew the cud as the cows do. They chew it up and swallow it and then bring it back up later. Amen? Don't just leave here today and forget about what was preached here today. Amen. But weigh it out. Amen? And don't just take it because I said it. No, get in the Word of God and study it for yourself. Amen? Amen. Look up who Jesus really is. Amen. What did He say? What was His teachings? We really need to understand these things because these are what keeps us grounded and settled. Amen. Yes. And on the right path that God has set for us. Yeah. Maybe I'll preach this next week. Because I didn't even get into everything that I wanted to get into today. But you know what? That one point I could preach on for the rest of my lifetime. Yeah. Right. Because God's will was the gospel. Yeah. And it pleases God through the foolishness of preaching. You say, why did He say foolishness of preaching? Because to the world it's foolish. <coughs> The wisdom of God is foolish with the world. They look at us and they say, those crazy people, they give their life for that. Oh, all the stuff they miss out on. You know what? We're here today, today and we're thankful for the gospel. Amen? Amen? And we pity those who don't have it because of what they're missing out on. Amen. Because you know what? When this world ends, Jesus said this, What profit a man to gain the whole world 
and lose his own soul. Yeah. It doesn't profit a thing. And that's what men and women are living their lives for, is to gain the whole world. To get as much of the world as they can get. But when they die, it's not going to leave with them. They can't take anything with them. You were born naked and it's for sure you're going to leave this world naked. And the only thing that matters is what did you do with the gospel? Yes. Did you believe it? Did it change your life? If not, it can. Amen? Amen. If you will trust and accept it. Amen? Yes. Amen. Let's stand. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you for the truth of your word. Lord, we just pray this morning that you would help us to realize that your will was for the gospel to be preached. And for those that heard to believe and to trust in Jesus as their Savior. Lord, and then changing their lives. Lord, that they might live also for the gospel's sake. Lord, we just pray that you would help us not to forget what our lives here are about. That truly our lives here are about the gospel. About our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Lord, if there's one here today that does not know <coughs> in their hearts that they have truly accepted Christ as their Savior, that they would do so today. We'll give you the honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.